The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for uh, Thursday, August 25th, and um, it's Psalm Day. So uh, our psalm for this week is Psalm 50, and um, verses, but it's not It's not all of Psalm 50. It's Psalm 50 beginning at verse 7 through the end, through, through verse 23. So... Um, as I've, I've said, you know, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about sacrifice with this because the psalm does talk about sacrifice, and, and we had the the picture of the the Pharisee and the and the tax collector in the in the temple, and um, kind of giving us a little bit of understanding of, of what what sacrifice looks like. So, uh, I'll be getting this out in the morning. We'll follow the morning order, page two ninety five in the hymnal. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, Psalm 50, beginning at verse 7. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to recite my statutes, or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline, and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him, and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free rein for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his right way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, we pray that you, we would hear you when you speak. Um, we hear your... Your testimony against us uh, in, in your in your commandments that we have not kept them. We um, we hear your rebuke, and we know that um, that in our fallenness, nothing we bring before you could be acceptable of ourselves. That you would not accept uh, sacrifices of bulls or goats or beasts uh, or birds, for all of those truly already belong to you. That um, that you are the God who, who neither hungers nor thirsts, nor nor would you tell us if you did, for, for you have plenty. You do not eat the flesh of bulls or drink of the blood of goats. Therefore we ask that you would grant us to offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving, that we would perform vows to you, O Most High, that we would call upon you in the day of trouble and the promise that you will deliver us, and we would glorify you. We know that to the wicked you speak to them, of having no right to recite your statutes, to take your covenants on their lips, for they hate discipline and cast their words behind them, cast your words behind them, that they are pleased to to keep company with adulterers and, and thieves. They give their mouths free, free reign for evil, and their tongues frame deceit. They speak against their brothers, their own mother's sons. We know that you have patience and forbearance. We know that. They and and we so often create you in our own image. Grant that we would hear your rebuke and the charge you lay before us, that we would not forget you lest we be torn apart and there be none to deliver, but that we would offer those sacrifices of thanksgiving, glorifying you, ordering our way rightly, that we would see your salvation as you have revealed it in your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Um, so, this uh, this uh, this psalm talks talks about sacrifice to start, right? And and sacrifice, I think, is a confusing thing because there are places. You know, he says, "I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds." Right? You have this this whole section from seven to to um, thirteen that talks about 
about offering sacrifices and those not being accepted and that, and that sort of thing, right? And and um, so so you see that the. The, the issue with sacrifice in the Old Testament is often, or, or as Jesus kind of um, speaks against it, you know, there are places where, where it sounds like, okay, well, we shouldn't offer sacrifice. Well, what, what's, what's the understanding? Well, well first of all, um, the understanding is that the sacrifices in the Old Testament should have been understood not to be atoning in themselves. They didn't earn God's forgiveness. What they did is they gave a picture of how God was communicating forgiveness to us, in particular how he did so in view of the Messiah, the Christ, that would come and he would atone for the sins of the world, right? So so when we, when we talk about offering sacrifices, we have to understand that no sacrifice is offered to earn God's forgiveness, right? Old Testament or new. Instead, what does God ask for? Well, he offers asks for a sacrifice of thanksgiving, performing vows to the Most High, calling upon him in the day of trouble that he would deliver us and he would glorify us. And we would glorify him, excuse me. Um, so so this is, uh, you know, I've got a note here, Ephesians 2.10. Um, you could think of Romans Romans twelve as well. Uh, offer your body. Romans twelve is offering your offer your bodies as living sacrifices, right? Um, you know the, the the good works Ephesians two ten the good works that we that God has given us to do that we would walk in them. You know as, as Christ has saved us, we have thanksgiving in view of that, and 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 um, we are we are thankful, right? And so there's the thankfulness of praise. Uh, we're going to touch on that here here again at the end. Uh, of this the psalm, uh, and, but there, there's the, the the thankfulness of of uh, of our, our our faithful lives, right? Of of walking faithfully, uh, and of course that as I always say, it doesn't mean that we don't sin, right? We try not to though. Uh, that's a part of the thankfulness, and um, but but then there is this faith, right? This is all rooted in faith. I mentioned that with the the, the sacrifice of of Abel offered in faith, right? Uh, so we we offer thanksgiving in faith, calling upon Him. That's what faith does. Faith calls upon Him in the day of trouble, and the promise that He will deliver us, and we shall glorify Him. We glorify Him by by giving Him, you know, when we're delivered by giving Him Him thanks and praise, and and telling people, right? Uh, thanks be to God, I was delivered from such and such. Right, and, and you know, so often we, we ask for to be delivered from things just because we, we don't like the discomfort, we don't like the struggle, right? Do we ask for relief of that struggle that we could give God thanks and praise and that, that people could could hear of his goodness in view of that? Do we do we do we ask for things that his name would be glorified, right? Now, as I say that, that's not like that's a, a magic you know, magic potion that if we just ask for that then then all of our troubles would be relieved, right? Um because God uses these troubles to to increase our faith somehow, you know that we would trust in Him over, despite those circumstances, over and against what we experience. That we would trust in His goodness. We would trust the Word that tells us of His love for us and that reveals the love for us that He has in Christ Jesus. Right? Okay. So there's there's sacrifices, um, and then you have this this uh, rebuke of, of wickedness. Um, right? That the, the the wicked. Hate is discipline, right? Uh, so, so you know, um, recognizing when we are disciplined that uh, that He is doing this for for our good, um, and it, then it, then it says verse eighteen, and I want to I want to address verse eighteen in particular because I think we could you know, for example, the Pharisee in the parable could could read something like this and think that he, that, that he's keeping that. Uh, it says, if you see a thief, you are pleased with him, and you keep company with adulterers, right? And and the Pharisee, you can see this in a very Pharisaical way, saying. See, I'm not like those adulterers and those thieves. I, I'm not pleased with them. I'm not keeping company with them, right? Well, no, no, this is talking about, um, you know, if you have a thief or an adulterer who, who moves in next door, right, should you, should you still, you know, befriend them? Should you still love them? You should, right? Because you might have the opportunity to tell them this isn't pleasing to God, and, uh, and that's not good. Um, and, and, and God calls for, for for repentance that you would that you would know of His mercy and His salvation, right? So this is this isn't that. It's saying, don't hang out with thieves and become a thief. Don't don't keep company with adulterers and become an adulterer, right? That's that's not good. So um, yeah. So then uh, he goes on to rebuke. You know that you sit and you, you use your tongue for deceit, right? That's that's sinful too. We often think of thie thieving and adultering as as, as especially evil sins, but this is uh, Eighth Commandment stuff, the harming reputation, using tongue for evil, sitting, speaking against your brother, slandering your own mother's son. Uh, and and um, 
you know, and then and there's this rebuke from God that comes to this. Uh, so then he says, Mark this, then you who forget God, lest I tear you apart. You know, there is judgment for sin, and, uh, and there be none to deliver. But instead, we know of the one who has delivered us, and our trust rests in him, that we would be, that we would, that we would, have life in that in that mercy uh, the one who offer think, offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me to the one who orders his way rightly I will show the salvation of God and um, you know I can't help but think of, of, of Psalm 116 there the, the offertory hymn that we sing uh, in, in, in one of the settings um, you know, the, uh, where it says uh, 116 um, 16 through 18 right uh, O Lord I am no, I'm sorry, 17 and 18, 17 through 19, 17 through 19. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, of thanksgiving, and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, that we have this, that, that psalm that we, that we sing there and, um, and, and the, the beauty of that uh, reflected here in, in this psalm. It's, um, you know, that, that we would... That we would offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving that God has 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 given us Christ, and thanks be to God for that. And so He has redeemed us and saved us. Uh, thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> we continue with the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.